Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Isn't Christmas a pagan holiday? Why are Christians against Halloween but they are pro-Christmas? Aren't Christmas trees demonic? What about Santa Claus? We will try to answer some of these questions in this video. So let's dive in first. I'm going to present five reasons why you might not consider celebrating Christmas and I'm going to try to bring an explanation of why I think that you can also use the same reasons to celebrate Christmas. Now the first one is that Christmas has pagan origins. There's a lot of uh, paganism that is involved and in holidays that were celebrated around the time of Christmas. For example, Roman culture celebrated the god Saturn from December 17th through 24th. And later on, they had this unconquered sun. They were celebrating that after that holiday. And there were cert certain sinful customs that were associated with this holiday that the church cleaned up and some of the customs were absorbed into the celebration of Christmas. And since the 4th century, Christians redeemed it and celebrated Christ's birth. Now some of you may argue, say, Vlad, I watched your video about not celebrating Halloween because of the pagan origins and now you're saying that we should celebrate Christmas. First of all, I'm not saying you should celebrate Christmas. What I'm saying is that when it comes to Halloween, the difference between Halloween and Christmas is that Halloween is evil in origin but also its current usage of darkness, demons, death, or witchcraft makes it part of the kingdom of darkness that Christians shouldn't take a part of. And sometimes uh, the meaning of words and symbols and traditions is determined more by its current usage than its origin. For example, like swastika was a symbol that was used for thousands of years as a symbol of good fortune. It would be foolish today to put that symbol on your door because of what it became in our culture. You can't stand and say, well, or origins were good, therefore it must be good. We have to look at also what does it represent today. And so when it comes to Halloween, it still represents, honestly, darkness, still represents witchcraft, it still represents darkness and death and all of this stuff. When it comes to Christmas, it's different. Christmas doesn't represent Satan. It presents the birth of Jesus Christ. At least that's what we celebrate during the time of Christmas. If Christians celebrating Christmas is pagan, so is gathering on Sunday to worship. You know that Sunday is actually named after a pagan god. It's a day of the sun. Wednesday is named after the Norse god of wooden. So is every day during the week and so we don't gather on Sunday to worship pagan God nor do we gather on Wednesday to worship a pagan God. And it's been so many years and thousands of years already that these pagan origins of names for these days have nothing to do with our current activities. Like if we take for example Nike, it, it's a brand of athletic shoes and clothing and wearing it doesn't mean that you're worshiping the Greek goddess of victory for whom actually the company is named. So while we don't ignore the origins, we look at what did they come to represent. Plus, Christmas was not originally a pagan holiday. There were pagan holidays that Christians just simply redeemed or I would say repackaged and instead of worshiping this unconquerable Son, they worshiped Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so therefore you can say that we can't celebrate Christmas because of its pagan origins or you can say that we can celebrate Christmas because of what it represents today, the birth of Christ. The second reason that I see where people say we, we don't celebrate Christmas or you shouldn't celebrate Christmas is because actual Christians for first four centuries did not celebrate Christmas until Christianity became a state religion. Now there's a few things you need to keep in mind. In the early centuries, Christians were more likely to celebrate a day of somebody's death then the person's birthday. Very early in its history, the church actually celebrated Jesus' death. They remembered His death, not His birth. Even Jesus told us to remember His death, but we don't see no mention about remembering His birth. Now one of the reasons that I believe that Christians allowed the birth of Jesus Christ to be taken off and spread like wildfire Christmas was because in the fourth century there was a controversy over the nature of Christ whether He was truly God or was a created being. It led to the increased emphasis on the doctrine of the incarnation of Christ, the affirmation that the Word became flesh. And it's likely that the urgency to proclaim Jesus 
adding humanity and being born by a virgin as testified by the Old Testament, witnessed by the shepherds, endorsed by angels. That is what most likely was one of the factors in spreading the celebration of Christmas. Now the third reason why people say that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas is that Jesus actually was not born on December 25th and it's true. He was not born on December 25th but His birth is a very special event for Christians and honestly for the world. The actual birth of Jesus is unknown. Many people have asserted that it's probably around March or early spring because the Bible tells us that when Jesus was born the shepherds were watching their flocks by night and shepherds don't really spend time in the fields with their sheep during the cold winters. So Jesus' birth was a virgin birth. It was announced by angels, attended by shepherds, acknowledged by wise men. It is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. Jesus came to live among us, to tabernacle among us and He brought the salvation and the redemption that God prophesied and predicted and was looking forward to it by the coming of Jesus. Therefore, while we know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, but we also know that the birth of Jesus Christ is a very special event and it's something that is worthy of celebration. If you celebrate your birthday, I think you should celebrate His birthday as well. Number four reason why you might say Christians shouldn't celebrate Christmas was that there is no command in the Bible to celebrate Jesus' birth. It's actually true. There is not one commandment, there's not one mention of disciples or apostles or the early church celebrating His birth. I know that Christmas is such a big deal in our culture but it was actually not mentioned at all in the Bible. But the Bible also doesn't prohibit us from celebrating His birth. Therefore, Christmas is not a pagan holiday. Words mean Christ's Mass, Christmas Christ's Mass. And just because the Romans holidays were there, they were celebrating these 12 days and then they were celebrating this, this unconquerable sun, but these were not the same holidays. They were not identical. Even those two holidays in Roman culture were not identical. And so yes, there were certain elements of Christmas celebrations like bells and candles and decorations are mentioned in the history of pagan worship. The use of such items in one's home in no way indicate a return to paganism. In the Bible we do see words like in Romans chapter 14 verses 5 through 8, one person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observe it to the Lord. And he who doesn't observe the day, to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. He who gives thanks, gives thanks to God. He who does not eat, to the Lord he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us live to ourselves and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, Therefore, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. So, if you're one of those people who are like, I'm not celebrating Christmas, it's not in the Bible, Jesus was not born on Christmas, the Bible doesn't give us recommendation to celebrate Christmas, it used to be a pagan holiday. Honestly, praise God. Whatever you do, do unto the glory of God. Follow your conscience, follow your conviction. If you're one of those people who will say, you know what, yeah, it, it was a pagan holiday but Christians repackaged it and um, I do believe that Jesus is fully God and fully man. He took my sins upon Himself and He was born. It brought joy to the world and I choose to celebrate it not just on Christmas, I choose to celebrate it every day and then He gave me my new birth because He came into this earth and He came into my heart by His Spirit and today I am a new creation and I celebrate that, gather with my family and I honor the Lord. That's also, as you do it to the glory of God, it gives God glory. The fifth reason that you may say we shouldn't celebrate Christmas is that the world celebrates Christmas, which makes some Christians hesitant. Now, it's true that for many in the world, Christmas is an excuse to get drunk, to get a party, um, to get something, give a little, leave work, get out of school, spend money, overeat and do all of these things. For us as Christians, it's an excuse to exalt Jesus in the face of the world that is at least tuned to His name. 
You know, when I walk in the mall around this time right now that I'm recording this video and I hear Christian Christmas carols and I hear about Jesus' glory, I, I, I hear songs about Him, you know, Mary did you know, you know, fall on your knees and I mean, even as I speak about it, I get goosebumps. It gives me this, you know, really good feeling that at least one time in the year our culture gets a chance to hear about the beautiful name of Jesus. And so, yes, it could make me hesitant that the world is using it to, you know, market and to sell stuff and people are using it for different selfish reasons and it's all about reindeer now, it's all about Santos and everything, but we still get a chance to hear about the name of Jesus Christ on a larger scale and I think that's a good thing. Modern world has hijacked our sacred holiday and made it a commercial nightmare. But in Philippians 1.18, Paul says, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. Now, when it comes to celebrating Christmas, it's your personal conviction. I think as a church, you can use that as an outreach to bring people to Christ and to bring people to the reality of the hope is found in Jesus. If you choose not to do that, actually you're not breaking any of God's commandments and you're not going against the Scripture. You're actually probably more in line with the Scripture because that is not something that is mentioned, encouraged and Jesus wasn't even born on Christmas. But there are certain traditions we all have. They're not anti-biblical. I call them, they're extra-biblical and they're not bad. They will serve us and help us to maybe advance the mission of Jesus Christ if they are not in conflict with the core principles of the Bible. Now, when it comes to Christmas trees, are they demonic? There is an evidence of trees, at least evergreen branches associated in pagan worship. I will not go into all the details of where they started because there's so much actually controversy about who actually started that, which culture actually embraced that, which pagan culture actually begun that. But the tradition of actual Christmas trees really began with the Protestant Christians in Germany around 16th century. The star on the tree was used to remember the star followed by the wise men. And in some cases, trees were topped by an angel to remember the angel who appeared to the shepherds on the night of Jesus' birth. And some people say, well, the idea of cutting down trees is clearly prohibited in the Bible because Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 through 16 and Isaiah 44, they talk about, you know, forbidding of cutting down of trees and decorating trees as people do during Christmas. And Isaiah 44 uh, notes the futility of cutting down the tree and turning it into an idol. But you must understand is both of these verses actually are before the birth of Jesus Christ and they have nothing to do with Christmas trees. They all have to do with idolatry. When the person puts a, a couch or when the person puts a fireplace or when the per person puts a tree or I have a lot of um, things, decorations in my house like paintings and other stuff. I am not worshiping these things and they in themselves do not draw attention to themselves as much as they're just simply a decoration. So I don't see anything wrong with putting a Christmas tree. Um, if you that's what you want to do, do that. If you don't want to do that and you're hardcore against Christmas trees, yeah, don't put them on. Don't waste your money, give that money to something else. What about Santa Claus? Now the idea of Santa has existed for very long. Actually, the belief that Santa enters through the house, into the house through the chimney developed from an old Norse legend. They believed that the goddess Hethra appeared in the fireplace and brought good luck to the home. Now, Santa Claus in the United States was really developed cleverly around 19th century by Coca-Cola. And American cartoonist Thomas Nest fashioned Santa's image as we kind of see today on the pages of Harp's Weekly. But there was actually a person in, who was around the 4th century. He was actually a bishop, Bishop Nicholas of Mora, which is the present day of Turkey. Saint Nicholas was a really kind Christian who was incredibly generous, who used his wealth and inheritance to help the poor as a reflection of his faith in Christ Jesus. And a lot of where the Santa idea well, actually originated from, I believe, was from this bishop, from this pastor. Now, what who Santa became today, of course, it got added on each generation and marketing came in and especially in the United States and the reindeer and through the chimney and all of this stuff and nice and naughty lists and all of that, of course, that 
most of it is not from this story but there was a guy the Bishop Nicholas who was a generous guy and there's a lot of stories circulating online. One of them is that there was a poor man who had three daughters and the man was so poor that he did not have enough money for dowry for his daughters to get married. Now a dowry was a sum of money paid to the bridegroom by the bride's parents on the wedding day and that still happens in some countries today. And one night this Bishop Nicholas, he secretly dropped a bag of gold down the chimney into the house. This meant that the oldest daughter was able to get married. The bag fell into the stockings that had been hung by the fire to dry. And this was repeated later for the second daughter and finally determined to discover who this person who has given them that money, a father secretly hid by the fire every evening until he caught Nicholas dropping a bag of gold. Now Nicholas begged this father not to tell anybody what he had done because he didn't want anybody to know so that he couldn't draw attention to himself. But soon the news got out that when anybody received a secret gift it was thought that that maybe it came from Nicholas. Now Nicholas eventually was exiled from his city and later put into prison during the persecution of Christians and then he was later on released by the Emperor Constantine who became a Christian and actually Nicholas attended the Council of Nicaea in 325 where things about Christianity were discussed. And so when it comes to Santa Claus, you know, you can tell your children is actually the story of Bishop Nicholas, of how he was generous, of how he was persecuted and of how he served God. Now what Santa Claus morphed into today, of course, it's big deviation from where it all I believe started but at the same time it's still a good opportunity for us to teach children and to teach other people about both the birth of Christ and amazing characteristics of Christians before us who lived generous, sacrificial and persecuted lives for the cause of Jesus Christ. So will I be celebrating Christmas? You bet I will because to me it's a joyful time and I know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th but we will gather with our family, we will praise God for His birth and I'm going to enjoy some Christmas carols and as well as having a wonderful time remembering that God has sent His Son to save me and to save us. Merry Christmas!